Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Hi Videocast, uh, the, sixth, the sixth one, and one which we have our great friend and familiar face uh, from this type of content, David Marks. Uh, he is here today uh, to talk as like on other uh, video and on the recent video casts that we've done, he is going to talk about uh, a specific case in which I Interactive took part on. In this uh, this time, we are going to talk about the governmental industry. Uh, it, it was a, a really big project, and I'm sure it was a rewarding project for us. Uh, we worked with a, a, an American uh, governmental uh, company, which um, David took part, uh, took a big part in this project, and he is going to talk uh, uh, about all of it today with us. And yeah, without further to add, uh, I will advise you to drop us a like and share this with uh, with everyone that you can. Uh, we would appreciate it. And stay stay tuned for more video casts to to come because we are uh, planning on doing many more uh, of these regarding these specific cases. And yeah, hi David, uh, how are you? Hello, João. Thank you for the presentation. We are here again. <laughs> yeah, we are here again. It's actually your second video cast, right? Uh, you, I don't you've that done... fair, but I think I believe on you. Yeah, yeah. you you you've done like the third one. We, we in which okay. in, like back in two thousand twenty one, in which we talked about from ten challenges for two thousand twenty one. Yes. So yeah. yeah, it it was it it it, it, it was, uh, a lot of things have, have happened since then. And today we are here to talk about uh, this governmental case and about this city that we are going to talk about and the project that we had in hand. Uh, David, can you give the ones at home uh, a little insight about the, con the context of the, the project and the client? Okay. Um, about this project, the main goal or the main challenge uh, was to update uh, the environment, the autistic environment from traditional applications to reactive applications, okay? Uh, with based on a specific application that we call Portal Lab Apps. Uh, we did more than one application, but I will explain better in, uh, in a few minutes. But yeah. the challenge was, I will move from traditional to reactive, how we can help, uh, help me, I have challenges in terms in terms of UI because I my applications is for citizens, so for B two C. Okay, this is the main case. Okay, okay. So, and like uh, it, it, for for me to understand also, um, it was like uh, the city needed like a, a a portal, right, in which they have all their apps available, mm -hmm. and the citizens could go there and like download them for them to use, like governmental apps. Yes, it's not a case specific to download because it's a portal and was a portal B2C and also an internal portal um, for management, but okay. the external portal, it's for citizens where they can find many applications, multiple service to answer a specific case, um, but it's not to install, okay? It's our web application that you can use in our, in our web, website, in your desktop, or also in your mobile app, okay, in your uh, mobile or tablet. Okay. Um, so the challenge was need to be responsive, need to be useful, need to be pretty because it's for people, it's, yeah. it's for new users, and we need, need to be uh, simple to use, okay, because typical when you need to do something with the state, financial, it's boring, so we need to improve the experience. Yeah, you need it to be user friendly, and yes, design, user -friendly. the design should be on point, as you as you said. And and talking about the design and going a little bit deep on the, on this case, uh, what was your approach uh, as a team when you saw the design and the requirements that the portal uh, needed, like the its requirements, and also what you do when you when you saw it? Okay, um, the client have a a bad experience before with the design, with the user experience in the, in the past apps. And the portal apps uh, was already 
working, but without a great user experience, was not working in mobile and was painful for the client. So was sure. the first challenge was to convince the client that you can implement a great user experience, okay? Improve, improving what uh, uh, exists until there, okay? So our UX team, the first, the first steps was to evaluate what exists, uh, each functionalities, and validate with the client which functionality will be still needs and what we don't need, and improve other type of functionalities that users um, need. So about feedback from the users, about feedback from the company, about feedback from their experience. So the first moment was evaluate the scope and the user experience that exists until, until that moment. The second step was try to um, design prototypes that have great user experience, that have great UI, because one of the challenge is to improve the UI how the users see the city, the governance. Okay, this is very important. They, they, the challenge was to improve the image that the, the citizens have from the, the service. Okay, so the UI was the, the, the first touch. And also not design a specific application, um, but, also, but design assets. Uh, to implement this application, but other applications, because the portal is only a directory that give access uh, to other applications. But the, the internal developers need, and today still, develop new applications, new functionalities with those assets that we deliver. So the challenge was not design an application, but design assets to improve the future applications. Yeah, like building them for for the future, as we like exactly, to say. Exactly. Uh, but but yeah, but you were talking about like more on the on the design part. But I, I want to also um, know a little bit more about this that uh, we we usually do, like on the on the development side. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your your approach on it? Like, what did our developers do? And I'm sure that it was the main, your main focus on this on this project. Um, what was the approach on that? I, I think I can isolate this in three steps. The first step was translate what uh, have been done in prototype, in style guide, in UI components. So as you know, we work with, with atomic design. This means that our UX UI team deliver uh, a UI style guide with all UI components that are needed to implement the prototypes. The applications. So this is one of the steps that we call UI development. The other step was implement the applications, the interface, the port, some applications, but essential the portals, the external portal for citizens and the internal portal for management. Um, and the other step was in terms of portal, in terms of interface, we was need to build everything from scratch. Okay. But in terms of core service, in terms of backend, uh, our systems backend uh, was need to uh, review what exists, and um, I, I can say that not uh, exactly better do the better way, but refactoring what exists and add new functionalities on top of it. Okay, so okay. we did the UI development that we call style guides. We did the end user for applications, and also we did the core service based. One not ex what exists until until that moment. Okay, this is was the the three areas where we work. Okay, okay, and like as you as you said before, but and uh, I'm sure you remember it. Like the first requirements of this project was like to have a, a, a design that should be on top. It should be user friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, and my question is like. How do you, do you do and how we at Interactive do to have like an efficient user-friendly UI and to create an efficient and scalable uh, UI architecture? Okay, let me think. So first of all, think about atomic design. Atomic design or atomic concept means that everything that you build in, in your screen, when you are building a screen, you are uh, like... Uh, it's a, like a puzzle. So you only need to 
bring your components, UI components, apply the business logic, the data, and that's it. When you are seeing an, a screen, we believe that every, uh, comp every pieces, every element in the screen, it's a component. Means that you cannot do specific things for the screen. You need to think when you are designing, designing components and follow the same way um, in terms of UI architecture that we do in development. When we design a screen, we need to move the pieces to the prototype from the style guide. Don't design specific in your screen. And in development, uh, apps happens the same way. So what we do is when you are creating a screen, you are moving your pieces from the patterns, from the components library, and you are applying business rule on top of it. This is the secret because this means that everything that you uh, is that you are doing can be reused in the future. And you know, for you guys, for junior developers, the best examples of how we can improve our experience with junior developers in the team, it's copy. They can copy our examples. So if you sure. use components, they can reuse your components. They don't build new things, okay? This is very important for us. And we believe that the, the secret is design in atomic model, implement in the tonic, atomic model. And the truth is that our systems from the scratch, it's, it's like this, components, actions, pieces that you can reuse, okay? Yeah. And also I'm sure, uh, because it's like a common uh, thing in all of these projects. It's like uh, the communication and the way we work with uh, the way developers work with designers and designers work with the developers, right? Uh, and uh, it, it leads me to another question. And it, it is like, how do you collaborate uh, you design uh, you developers with the designers and the designers with the developers. How do you collaborate to uh, ensure that the development phase is smooth and easy for for you, and you can uh, achieve the goals of the project? Okay, touch point. The success of the project it's on design because when you are designing thing, designing something, you are defining the scope. Yeah, yeah. You are this? yes, please go. Yeah, but, yeah because, because like we, we we tell this all the time. One error on design phase or like a, a change on the design phase, it's way easier to change and won't affect that much a project. Uh, we uh, and on the other hand, on the development phase, if you need to make a change there, yes, it will cost way more, it will be much harder. To, to achieve the project goals, and it will be much harder for the teams to work. And can you validate the project? <laughs> because yeah. you know, I don't know if you know the expression spaghetti codes. So uh, I know. Know. <laughs> when you are changing your scope in, the, in terms of functionalities, add new functionalities, uh, remove functionalities, when you are developing, so your core, your base structure, it's not prepared to this, means that you are having snippets that go to fix bugs and to be aligned, but your code is not supported exactly what you implement now. This means that when you back to the project, you, you don't understand what you did because you, you lost your process. You lost your quality of code. But back into the, 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 the secret is, when you are designing the interface, you are defining the scope, okay, you can have user stories for designers, you can have um, a, a well-prepared doc requirements document, but the potential of increase and decrease the costs when we are designing, um, it uh, means that you can spend 10 hours or 100 hours only with a wrong corner. Obviously, obviously it's not, yeah. not like that, but you understand. So yeah. if I design aligning with the, the technology, if I design um, well knowing which type of functionalities the platform, in this case, our systems have and don't have, because it's important also to know what our systems don't have, you can design uh, aligning with the developers. And when, when you don't, when you know that this component or this feature that I'm designing don't exist pre built in a platform, I know that these have more costs for the projects. But the guidance is, is you can do it 
that you need to share with the stakeholders, with the manager, uh, with the product manager saying, guys, I'm designing this. Uh, this is important for user experience and the product manager or the client, the final client, need to have the chance to decide, I want to exp uh, expand more one month on this feature or not. So yeah. cannot be the designer to decide this, need to be the stakeholder, need to be the client. And the main channel challenge is how the designer knows this, how the designer knows it, it's including something that the platform don't have and will cost one month of work, okay? We, we have experience where the client uh, bring a design for us to, uh, to evaluate. And the estimations, the previous, the, the first estimations was from the client was one month of implementation we, and we share almost one year. Oh. This is really. It, and so it's it's like, if you refactor your UI, if you design your UI, align it with the platform, you have a well-processed uh, development phase. If not, you need to know how many experts you need to implement, how many front-end developers you need to implement this, okay? This is important, okay? Know exactly what you design. Okay, yeah, I, I think that's the, 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 main, the, main, the main phrase uh, that sums it all up, like, <laughs> yes. that, 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 that's the way to, to go, actually. And, and, and yeah, but like, speaking about this, like the the design me being to need to be well validated by all stakeholders and regarding the the developers uh, challenge on this project how do you handle like um, a, a design that will ensure that a web uh, uh, like like this portal sh can be uh, working well in all devices the design is responsive how do, how do you handle that? Like, how, how do you, how, uh, what are the, the things that you do to overcome this, to, to get this done? Okay. Uh, okay, I can share it with two, three steps that we do or tools that you, we use. First, when you are designing, talk with developers. We have a process where a developer, um, where a designer need to validate the UI with the developer. Okay, depending on the project, exist a process, exist meetings, when the developer need to uh, ask validation uh, from some develop from or the the designer ask validation from a developer, okay, to ensure that what is designed uh, it's aligning with the platform or it's aligned with the scope of the, the project. Second one is obviously it depends on expertise. If designing is more junior or more expert, the quality will be delivery in terms of quality will be different. But we have tools to help junior designers and also expert designers to don't the or to avoid mistakes we, we have a ui kit and screen templates that help us to don't forget things for example when you are designing a screen we have, we already have a screen and also responsive screens with uh, portrait portrait landscape uh, and the other type of approach to ensure that they don't forget to design for those screens this is one process that help us to ensure that designer don't forget the states. We call states, the different okay. views. And also the components. We ensure that the designer only use components that are uh, designed in the install guide. So if you want to do something different in the, in the screen, you need first design this component in the style guides and after drag the component to, the, to your screen prototype, okay? Those yeah. are the three steps. Validate with developer, Use a UI kit and starter kit, and also uh, use atomic design. Okay, but and you were talking about this type of documentation that is good for not only for designers but also for developers to be ready to build this type of applications uh, for for the future, as we said before. And I wanted to go to that part and ask you how do we at Interactive do this of like transferring knowledge to teams so they can be ready and prepared for what the future updates or the future developments may be. Okay, this is important. We deliver what we call design system and design system as probably you know that you believe it's not design, okay? Have design, have rules for design, but 80% it's not design. 80% 
it's a documentation that have all UI and also uh, developer gu guidelines. So design systems, it's not about design. It's about interface. And today we deliver also um, developer guidelines. This means that when you are developing a screen with the uh, advanced search, we, we have sample code to implement the advanced search. We have rules to implement uh, the logic, not, in the, not only in terms of front end, but also the outsystems logic. So first of all, if you want to ensure the future, if you want to ensure the um, uh, well-prepared developers ramp up for your team, and you know today who we are in the, the war, we saw developers in and out in the companies. Yeah. Um, like vacations, <laughs> everyone in the vacations. But the, the importance is have in your governance model, have a design system. Probably have a design, a design system owner, if you can. But have a design systems when you can check the rules, when you can follow the rules. I, I, uh, it's common to say, I, it's common to say that you only can say that is this is wrong or this is not implementing the um, following the rules because uh, one, when you have rules. So if you are checking something that a developer did or a designer did and you are saying that is wrong, you only can say it is wrong if you have how to show uh, the, the correct way and design systems is, is this this process. When today we have many clients that work with the partners, it's it's common, it's normal, and they don't use this type of rules with the partners. So, so it means that each partner develop their own way with own real rules, with own conventions, and typically the factors are a, a mess. With design systems, you can bring together uh, to the same same wave. Okay, and and, and that that is curious, like. Uh, one of our main jobs or our main challenge is to make teams adopt this design system methodology. Yes. I may I may say like yes. I, 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 I bet for teams it's not easy to start uh, uh, like from from one moment to another to adopt this. And we are the ones that are there for them. We give them support. We 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 give them the the tools. We we teach them how to use them, and we make sure that they 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 are ready. But like during this process, and also on the other process that we've talked about, like can you share with us? And of course, if you can, David, uh, can you share with us a, a, a complex front end uh, issue or problem that you faced on this on this project, and how did we at Interactive overcome it? Complex front end, we have so many. Um, but the best one. The so many, but nothing like out of the box. So it's a regular uh, issue. But I think the main issue is how we transfer our knowledge and our process and our rules to uh, and our way of working to the team. Um, because we believe in design system, we believe in rules, UI, atomic design. But when you arrive to a new client, in this case, a uh, specific case, we, they don't know well what we are talking about. They don't know well how to do it. Um, so it's important in the first step, explain why you do this way and explain and, and train and share how to do it. So the process is you don't do this type of work alone as an interactive. You work with a client. Typically, it's our rule and our flag. Bring someone to work with us, okay? And train this, this person, train these developers because they can share in the future the, the knowledge and they can support the other developers. Um, it's, usual to, it's usual to do. We apply a governance model and work in a governance model with the client. Depends on the client, depends on the size. But yeah. in this specific case, we have a, a developer, uh, the tech lead, working with us and sometimes builds things with us to train the developer and to justify the, the way of working. Because we believe that if we finish the, the project, if you don't have 
anyone from the other side that we will promote the project, the design systems, the assets in the future, in the factory, the project don't have success. We'll die yeah. in the next in a few months. Okay. The, 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 this will be lost through time. Right? Yes, because we are implementing rules. We are implementing documentation and developers don't like documentation. And okay. designers uh, love to do other things, not following the components, not following the style guide. I understand I'm a developer, but that's why it's important someone that try to bring together to, to work at the same way, basing, based on uh, design system documentation. Okay, okay. But, and like, um, for the future, oh, and regarding this, uh, this project, what do you think, in your opinion, should be the, the, um, the strategy for future developments? I, I'm sure that you have answered this already because you, I, I, I'm sure that the answer will be uh, more or less like the communication and the fact that you have a design system owner on the, mm -hmm. the camera. But I would like, like to have your personal opinion on how should they work, what, what should the strategy be for future developments regarding okay. this client? In my opinion, I can say in technical parts and in management part, in management area. In technical parts, I will back to say atomic concept, components, vanilla JavaScript, vanilla CSS, don't use frameworks, try to don't use frameworks on top of all systems, okay? Um, Implement a well UI architecture, isolate your components from the business logic, isolate your components from the team, because as we know, we don't de develop an application in a, in a shot. We need to maintain. Today, we a scope of application is to build the first, the first feature. You will implement new features on the top of it in the future. So try to promote components, try to promote a, a well architecture, okay? To add and remove features as soon as possible, okay? Uh, reduce the maintenance. The other area, in terms of go governance, implement a well government governance uh, model based on design systems. This is that when you are developing a new project in your factory, in your, in your IT departments, a new application, you need to know that exists a design system. You need to know which type of components exist, which type of template screens exist, to try reuse uh, as much as possible what exists and implement only what is needed. So when you are de defining a scope for a new application or for a new feature, try reuse as possible what exists, okay? In case where you cannot reuse or you want to implement a better experience or you want to implement a feature based on your business that don't exist, first develop for the design system. Develop a component, design a component, implement a template screen, deliver this in design systems, well documented. After then, you can use it. So work on, on top of it. This, this way we will reduce a lot of work. You are promoting um, the same way of working and you are promoting that other ones will reuse your code in the future. Yeah. So you are reducing costs, you are implement, implementing fast and also you will implement uh, well maintenance and uh, better maintenance for the future yeah and everyone benefits from it like yes i know that is difficult because you are struggling your process oh, i want to do new things but try to reuse only in last case try to implement and when you implement implement the same way for your factory for your library not specific for application because have a lot of costs yeah, sure. Yeah, and, and, and we've talked about the costs already. Yeah, yes. uh, they can be really, 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 really painful for the for the client. But and this way, they 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 easy the process way more, and it's way cheaper, way faster, and it's easier to maintain, of course. Uh, and yeah, and, and like we are reaching the the end of this video cast, and I would not want to finish this without asking this, and I also want a personal opinion on this and about this project in specific. And uh, it's like, David, uh, what's your opinion uh, about the success of the project? What, do you th what were the results and how do you feel that the project went? Okay, I can say that the, the project was 
was a challenge because um, not was a, a common scope at where we deliver a design system uh, was build more than, than this, the low code parts. We implement, for example, um, create accounts, OTP authentications, brute force, uh, social media logins. So this is type of work that we don't do in our systems as a regular project. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, but I, I'm, I'm seeing that in the end of the day, we deliver um, a bunch of assets that enable clients uh, go alone. Okay, this is important, it's strange because we want work still working with the client and we're still working, but this means that give a chance to the client go alone means our success. Yeah. Uh, this means that the, the team already have the assets, the team already have the knowledge and can go um, developing applications alone, following the rules, following the assets. So the success is this. If you, the client don't need more our work, the project uh, were, uh, the, means that we achieve the goal. The success for the clients. So today they can implement new applications based on a, a well architecture and based in reusing UI components, UI assets, and also business logic patterns. This means that imagine in the future they want to change the brand. Imagine they want to change the brand. They today they, it will be easy because yeah, everything is centralized. Imagine that they, they want to add a new feature in terms of security. It's easy to implement. Imagine, for example, if they want to implement a new application, <laughs> this is what they are doing. It's super easy because they, they already have templates. It's only yeah. create a new application and already have the authentication, the brute force installed. So they only need to focus in the business logic from the application, not for the the entire navigation and login yeah. system. And are they building that application that you are talking about effortless, like uh, you've planned for them to do? Yes, they, they still Perfect. develop yeah. applications with less less work because we implement a system that today the application is already, the template is already prepared with login system, brute force, uh, the same integration com core widgets. So when they need to implement a new application, they only need to implement the screens, the content screens, everything it's um, integrated with the login system and everything it's integrated with the portal, portal yeah. app. Okay, they don't need to um, develop specific login or integration systems for the application. Yeah, and that is perfect. That, that the, like that's the way we want projects to to end up. It's like yeah, in this way, was a, the, way was the, great experience. the client uh, the client is able to do these things, uh, and yeah, the, thanks thanks for sharing this. I think it was like the ones that all, I think that the ones that stood by it till the end really got what working with us really is like, and and yeah, David, thank you, uh, and thank, thank you for. Sure. <laughs> you're welcome and thanks for the ones that are listening to this until the end and, and yeah stay tuned for more video cats to come uh, for more master classes to come in which I expect the vid to be in some of them really 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 soon yes. uh, <laughs> we'll see we'll see we'll see and yeah thank you all take care and see you soon bye bye